All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Reza Abraham, who is in, where are you today, Reza? I've forgotten where you are. Uh, Malaysia, Malaysia. From Malaysia, Poland. that's right. That's right, Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Reza's our, our first uh, our first person from Malaysia and the first person from Kuala Lumpur. So two firsts in one go, which is fantastic. It's an honor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And Dr. Reza Abraham is the founder of the In Control Group. He's an author, executive coach, leadership consultant, and speaker on various topics. And he helps people get control of their lives, be in control. And you are author of the book, In Control. A, syst a systematic approach to taking complete control of your life and career. So let's let's get straight into it, um, Reza. I, I think I think it's fair to say that nowadays people feel even more out of control than probably ever before. They feel that there's so many things outside of their control, and life is happening to them as opposed to them act actively you know, um, you know, plotting their own course. So when you wrote this, when you wrote this book, right, um, I, I guess those are the, those are the kind of people that you're, you're looking for, you were looking, you're aiming for. And there's so many more than that, because I really feel like there's an epidemic where people just feel powerless. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, that's true. That's true. Um, and uh, what, what is basically when we wrote the book uh, In Control, uh, I, I have I have this vision that uh, I don't want to specifically write for people who are basically the life is out of control. We are also looking at like everyone, every ordinary persons out there that they're trying to get better out of their life and career. And that was the main mission. And uh, when we are talking about living an in control life, I'm not talking about like a very cliche saying that, oh, you can control everything. Everything is like possible. It can be done. But what we mean as living an in control life, if I want to put it as one sentence, it's simply meaning that you have to live a life where you are taking complete responsibility. You're staying fully responsible for what you can control so that you don't have to apologize for something that you cannot control. So it means that you are aiming for a life where you are in love with what you do. You love who you do it with. You love who you do it for. And you love how you do it. So these are the four elements that we spoke about it in the book. We build a system around it that I would be very glad to explain further details around it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just to, just want to pick up there on something you said about uh, you know taking personal responsibility because I think that's such a critical piece. I think oh, self awareness yeah. and personal responsibility. And unfortunately, I think we live in a world today where pervasive popular culture and everything tends to promote the opposite of taking taking personal responsibility for everything or being accountable for things within your control. Uh, mm. And that is obviously the first step is to realize that you are responsible for your life and yes. you and you you have control over a, quite a large amount of it. You certainly have control on how you show up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think I think the, the you, you put it right. Uh, the, the very first step in leaving and in control life is a start with the, with the core of the whole system. And that starts with the word called consciousness. It means that you become aware that, hey, there is such a life even exists. And if you don't do that, if you become if you don't become conscious about it, I think there is no way to help you. And there are a lot of people, John, out there that they're just waiting for the things to happen to them. But in our study, in our interviews that we have done, we have gone through like hundreds of high performing athletes, uh, CEOs of the multi, multi billion dollar organizations, um, salespeople who are basically staying on the top of the game consistently for a very, very long time. And one thing we notice about them that all of them has acknowledged was the fact that, hey, living an in-control life, it is not accidental. It is very, very intentional. It means that when one become aware, one become responsible for taking control of the things that they can control. I mean, we are not here to nag about, complain about the things that is out of our control. 
-hmm. But there are a lot of elements at any point of time that you definitely can control them. Yeah, no, I agree with you because it's very easy. It's very easy to complain about things that you have no impact, that you can have no impact on that are completely without of your control. So it's very easy to focus outwards and go, well, nothing I can do. I can't control that. Therefore, my life is uh, is stuck here as a result. Um, so for those people, as you said, people who want to who want to start getting control of their lives. Right. So the accountability and obviously self-awareness. But talk me through. What are the what are the steps to actually getting in control? Beautiful, yeah. So, um, the, the, first of all, let me talk about like the the whole system itself, and let me define it with the word system in specifically. The word system, I think, the best definition that I have ever heard, I heard it from this guy by the name of Bob Berg many years ago. He said, "No, system, no, Bob. Oh, you know Bob, right? Yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic guy. Fantastic guy." And uh, so he said that system can help an ordinary person achieve an extraordinary result predictably, right? So when I started to write the book, I have the similar mission in mind as well. I want to make sure that I can actually set it up in a systematic way so that everybody can follow. So how does the system start, John? The very first step, which is the core of the in-control life, it's consciousness, right? Then we need something to hold this system together, which we called it in the book as cornerstone. There are three cornerstone that built the whole system on top of it. So it is start with consistency. It means that whatever you do, if you're not disciplined enough, it's not going to work. We all know that the power of discipline. The second cornerstone is contentment. It means happiness, being content. So if you are not happy about whatever you're doing at the end of the day, again, means nothing. And the third one is conversion. It means that you're constantly growing and getting better. So being disciplined, being content about it, and constantly growing is what we call it as the tree cornerstone. And then every one of us, this is where the, the starting point get, comes, in, comes in. Every one of us, we generally struggle in certain areas in our life. I mean, if you look at it from gratitude perspective also, that at any point of time, there are certain things that is fine in your life. You know, it could be maybe you have a great relationship or maybe you don't have a good relationship. Maybe you are happy with your work, but maybe you're not happy with your work. So we, we wrote there about 12 pillars that start with your character. Then it goes to your like communication to your um, compass, which is your goal setting. Then it comes to your competency, all the way goes until contribution, which there are 12 areas of life that you can study. So what normally we do, we always ask our readers and all our participants to go through a very simple assessment that we have it in our website as well, where you can do a very quick survey to find out which area in my life I need to start to take complete control of. And Again, it is not going to be like just snap and everything happened, mm -hmm. everything changed. It's a progressive journey. Even if you ask me right now, is your own life in control like 100%? The answer is no, because we are in a movement. I mean, that's the beauty mm -hmm. of life as well, because you, if, if everything is perfect in life, you know, there is no meaning into it too. So that's the struggle. That's the, that's the, the, the effort that you put in where gets you to the point that you want to be at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree, and I love that. I love that piece about the the very st first step is unconsciousness because, and as you said, being intentional because again, you know, it kind of runs against the cult, the pervasive culture today is where you know don't be conscious of anything. You have got, you've got your phone to distract you. You've got all these things. You don't have to think, and I and I think people are missing such a, people are not spending enough time with their own thoughts you know get yeah. rid of the devices get rid of the external thing spend some time and become conscious about yourself so i i, I love that piece but what do you say to somebody though reza who says well yeah it'd be great if i loved my job it'd be great if i loved all the people i work with but that's just not realistic Oh, it is. Uh, it is something that, you know, that's why uh, we are when see, this, John, actually, this is, this is a really, really a good question, because when we started to work with a lot of like this high performing, ultra high performer individual, what I found very interesting is that how they design the life that they want. Right. You know, I have seen a lot of people that they are in a relationship. They are in a job. 
that they are not enjoying. They're not very happy about it. And they do nothing. You know, they simply stay there because they say, oh, I have my commitment. No, this is what I always tell people. I said, the day, the day that you cannot, you cannot honor your boss, you cannot honor the organization where you are, the job that you have, the relationship that you are in, is the day that you need to make a decision and exit. Don't stay and complain. Don't stay and just like nag about it, right? You see, you can take action. I'm not saying that, all right, so you hurt me today and you're just going to resign tomorrow. No, put up the steps forward, right? So, okay, what is the step? In three months to six months, I, frankly speaking, I found that you can change a lot of things. In fact, you know, the system that we spoke about it in the book itself about like the habit trackers that how you can actually transform yourself, meaning that you can actually fall in love with certain things. You can change your stuff. It's basically the process of 100 days, meaning that in, 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 in sorry, 70 days, which is what we call it as a 10 weeks. In 10 weeks, you can change a lot of things. Sometimes you just need to update your resume and start to apply for something else. Like, you know, why do you have to stay and complain? That's, that's mm -hmm. where people get it wrong. It means that it's, it's a decision. This is one of the pillars in the book, which we call it as a courage, right? Your ability to get out of your comfort zone and do something you have never done before. And making sure that you love what you do, which most people, they love what they do. And you love who you do it with and who you love, uh, love who you do it for, it can be tick too. And I personally, John, I have seen a lot of people, they love what they do, but they hate the people that they are doing it with. And they are still in that job for the last 10 years and still complaining. Then yeah. why, why are you there? As simple as that. Exactly. And, and one of the other things that I think is interesting, Reza, too, I think uh, is is questioning what you don't like. Because sometimes maybe you will say, oh, I hate my job or I hate my boss or I hate this. But that's not really true. It's something yes. else. It's something else. And you're just projecting it and saying, okay, that's where I'm going to focus right now. And every little thing is going to irritate me because, uh, but you have to kind of draw, come back and actually figure out what is it that's actually making you unhappy? Is it really your job or is it something entirely different? Yeah. I, 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 I'm hundred percent agree with you. You know, in my job as executive coach, I have worked with a lot of leaders and individual in, in different organizations. So when I, when I go through the coaching process with them, so one of the common things, like, you know, we are starting a coaching people, people come to me and say like, you know, I hate my job, you know, look at mm -hmm. these people, what they wrote to me, you know, just, just a few days ago, I was having an experience with one during one executive coaching. There was this senior VP in one of the multinational companies. He came in, he went just through uh, one 360, you know, 360 feedback. And then mm -hmm. he came in, he put the paper in front of me and said, look, Reza, look what they wrote there. And this guy had no shame, blah, blah, blah. You know, he was like really, really upset. He was so disappointed. And then I asked him the same question. I said, what do you love about this report? And he was completely caught off guard, you know. Because he was expecting me, you know, to say mm. like, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, these people are so wrong and so on. But sometimes, you know, we also need to ask ourselves, right? Is it really something that you are, you're just cornering yourself and you are so bothered about certain things that actually doesn't really matter? Yeah. Meaning that, you know, even in the same things, John, ap apply in relationship as well. People walk away from a relationship because they are unhappy about 20% of the things and they are <laughs> happy with the 80% of the stuff. And then they move into another relationship. Then only they find out that, hey, there is 20% is missing on the other one too. So having a positive perspective towards things also is really important. And if anyone here listening to us and they say like, okay, so how am I going to help myself? You know, I, I really can't stand this guy. You should see my boss. You're not working in my organization. You don't know who am I dealing mm -hmm. with. The best way to do it basically is to get some professional coaches, uh, some, yeah. uh, what we call that, like sometimes therapists, you know, counselors that they really can help you. Actually, this is what we call as a Johari windows, right? So they can actually help you to see the part of it that is good about that person. At any situation, there are certain things good about other people. No matter how much you hate them, mm -hmm. right? There is a still certain things that actually you can like about that person. So the goal is about finding that and then do the measurement. Which one actually value more? 
is it really something this one is like outweighing the good things about that person then you need to exit but if it's like the good things is worth more then stay stay and build that relationship yeah and and as you know i mean oftentimes is again we we like to project so we'll find a, a boogeyman for ourselves and we'll say you know maybe it's your boss or whatever and everything they do you just you blame it on them but you're right if you step back and say well what do you actually like about them um It'll probably change your perspective a lot. The other thing I really like, uh, that second one that you said about the consistency piece, mm. because this is where I think so many people fall down. And we're all, we've, we've all been guilty of it ourselves. Oh, I mean, yeah. We all start things, no good habits, and then we just don't continue them. Or, or worse, we get a little arrogant because we go, well, I've been doing this for years now. I don't have to. I don't have to do all the fundamental stuff anymore. I can. I can take shortcuts, and that gets you in trouble as well. So I always like to use. I mean, I do martial arts, and I always like to use the analogy that sometimes, like, I'll go to class tonight, maybe, and we will maybe spend the whole class doing basic footwork, and like you've oh. done a thousands and thousands of times before. But you redo it because if you don't have the fundamentals and you're not consistent with the fundamentals, then everything falls apart. So consistency is something that's so important. But I think it's thing, something a lot of people struggle with. Oh, yeah, definitely. Consistency is like, you know, I, I remember when I was in my early 20s, that was the first time I, I got to know Jim Ron when he was still alive, you know. And uh, I, I never forget, I never forget, he said, like, you know, he has these famous things, like he said, the system for success is just a few discipline practice every single day. And it can start from, like, you know, making up your bed in the morning, planning your day, daily reflection. So these are some of the things that, like, are, like, the basic things. It's so easy to do, and it's so easy not to do. And I love the way you put it. I also had a lot of interest in martial arts, right? So sometimes it always goes back to the basic. It's about like, this, this is how, you know, is if you are very determined, if you are very disciplined in doing small things on a regular basis, for sure, you will be able to move mountain. And that is very important. It's always about like small compounding, small accumulation of being consistent in doing simple things, right? So the perfection is coming. But the problem, John, is that we are living in a, in a society that most people, they want to see things, they want to see the change like, like this. You want, you want to lose like 10 kg just like that, right? And, and there are some bad examples out there, especially like, you know, we hear this, especially in the sales community. Uh, we always hear this, like people say, you don't need to work so hard. You just need to work smart, right? And, mm -hmm. and I always tell people that, hey, hardworking, being disciplined is a necessity. It's like going to the washroom is a necessity. You don't ask yourself, hey, should I go to washroom today or not, right? Tomorrow, <laughs> let me see how. You have to go to the washroom. So the way I put the discipline, John, I always tell people, and it doesn't matter what you do, whether you could be a leader, you could be a salesperson, you could be an entrepreneur or whatever, or stay at home mom. So you got to be disciplined and it's a necessity. I don't negotiate discipline with people. I seriously, I don't negotiate. Like the same way, I don't negotiate discipline even with my two sons, right? Because mm -hmm. it is very, very important for success. That's why we put it as one of the cornerstone of the whole system. Yeah, no, I, I love that. Reza. One of the things I always say to people, though, is that there is there is one thing that you cannot teach people, uh, and that's hard work. Hard work. Oh, you yeah. can't teach people hard work. They it has to come. It has to come from inside themselves. So, and that comes from consistency and discipline, and uh and the people you surround yourself with but yeah you can't you can't teach people hard work and, and i think discipline is so in incredibly important but as you say we live in a shortcut culture today oh, yeah. where everything oh, yeah. is uh i always love it's funny because you know if you're sitting up at 3 a.m in the morning and you're watching those uh, infomercials or what you we used to you know and you're saying like you know you can have you can have a six pack in three seconds a day you know once a week and you're going fantastic, you know. And of course you can't, but um, but 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 you probably buy it because you want you you fall prey to that shortcut, and nothing good ever happens, just just very quickly or overnight. 
Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. This this is something that uh, it's uh, it's what we call that everything we want to achieve in our life. Definitely, it has that lag result, right? So there are certain lead behaviors that you gotta mm -hmm. do on a regular basis so that you get that lag result, right? It's like going to the gym, you exercise, you come back home, you see yourself in the mirror, you're still the same, nothing changed, right? Mm -hmm. So would you mm -hmm. stop going to the gym? No, we still go to the gym, you still exercise because the coach, the trainer will tell you that, hey, if you stay consistent, if you do what I'm asking you to do, if you control your food, I can guarantee you within a month, you will achieve yeah. that. The same, the same rule applies in, in every area, even in sales as well. People want to see, like, see, I always give an analogy for the sales team. I always tell them, like, you are not in control of whether the customer say yes or no, right? Be because at the end of the day, it's the customer decision. But you know what you're in control of? How many calls you make, how many times you follow up with them, how, how persistent you are in doing that, how well you know your product, what technique do you use in order to negotiate or convince the customer. So those are small things that it needs to be there. Hey, the result will come, eventually will come. It's just a matter of time. So it requires you small step, very disciplined way and putting a lot of hard work there. And I can assure you that the, the, the success will be there. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned about like the, the contentment, uh, mm. the contentment piece as well. And I think that's a really, a really interesting piece because again, I don't think a lot of people would even recognize what contentment felt like because we're always, you know, again, you know, the pervasive culture is, you know, always be discontented because you need to keep moving. You know, you need to be always moving forward, always striving. So this, so I don't even think a lot of people would recognize what contentment felt like. Yeah. I, I mean, you're putting it really forward. Actually, you're touching all the biggest problem. And the reason actually I, I even started to write the book <laughs> because, uh, you know, when I, when I started to work with a lot of these individual, we found out that, you know, I mean, we are again living in a culture that we often look at people and say like, I want to be like that guy. And yeah, it's yeah. great. And it's great. You know, frankly speaking, having a role model, having a desire, having the hunger to do more, achieve more. This is something that it's awesome. It's really, really awesome. But also at the same time, there are a lot of things that is currently fine in our life. And if one person does not realize that you got to learn to be content, it means that be happy where you are right now and enjoy the journey while you're mm. achieving the bigger goal, you were never going to be happy because, you know, it's like the, the examples that we always put is that people would say like, I want to become a millionaire. But the, the thing is, once you achieve the million, then you meet someone that who is like, a billionaire you know and then yeah. <laughs> yeah so now i have to reach that guy so there is always another mountain to climb there is always a next goal that you can go there so the key that people are missing here is to learn how to be happy right now how to be content right now so the definition of the contentment that we put in the book is about living a life with no regrets because the last mm -hmm. things, the last things, John, you know, one thing that I always is scared of is that you reach to the last day of your life and you notice and you realize certain things that you could have done it earlier, but you just didn't do it. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the that's the part that we all have to be very conscious about it. You have to constantly assess yourself. That's why yearly goal setting is super important. It's so important always to assess yourself where you are standing right now and making sure you remind yourself, you know, in the book, we talk about like happiness reminders. Sometimes you just need to remind yourself that be happy, be yes. content. Don't forget. And having someone to remind you of that, that is really, really helpful. Yeah, uh, it always reminds me. There's a there's a, there's somebody I know who's a who's a writer and a, a movie a movie director, and he calls his company Roses Now, and it's Roses what his father now. used. Okay. Roses Now, and here's why. This is his father. That was his father's uh, catchphrase, and his father always said, "Like give people roses now." But also, as you are walking through life stop and smell the roses and i think oh, that's yeah. what you're talking about i think there are i think in our lives there are roses around us that we walk past every day and we never stop to smell them and appreciate them and that's what I, as you said there were probably fantastic areas in our lives areas are really content 
but we focus on the discontent. We don't stop for a moment and say, oh, look, this is a beautiful rose. Let me smell this for a moment. Yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard. You know, that that is something that especially when we are living in a fast moving world that we are right now, it is really, really difficult to do that. So that's why I always tell people that if you are struggling in this area, you know, I, I give you one very quick example, John. Mm -hmm. I, I had this problem with my my two boys, you know, every night when we wanted to basically go through the similar routine of like brushing your teeth and all. Mm -hmm. And my kids were very small. It was like, you know, one, he was he was like about three, four years old. And I love this kid unconditionally. You know, my love towards him is very, very unconditional. But, you know, having two boys, a small boy be under the age of like five years old, it is very stressful. And then we reached to the end of the day, like 10 p.m. And I wanted to basically just go to sleep. And this guy doesn't want to sleep. And I noticed that I was getting angry at him like every single night. And I, I, I did a like really a conscious awareness exercise to find out like what's going on and what can I do to solve this problem. So I put for myself a habit tracker, you know, I said that I'm going to stop getting angry at this boy. So every day that I was not getting angry, I just tick myself. So then what I did was I noticed that I'm missing it. Then I noticed that, hey, you love this boy unconditionally. So what can I do to change myself? which I wrote that story actually in the book as well. I wrote to myself and I printed out, I just put it up there that, hey, Reza, you love this boy as much as your life, you know, so he's very important to you. Look at him. He's just a small boy and he wants to enjoy your life. Small smile right now. So I put the reminder there, John. And then every single night, whenever I was about to get angry, I just look at that printing there and I smile and say, contentment. So that is something like, you know, sometimes people just need some help. You might want to put a sticker for yourself, you know, something, a reminder, a reminder, because we are human being, you know, there's so many things going on in our head. And sometimes there's a small opportunities that you could have been happy. You could have made someone's day. You could have compliment someone, but you just didn't do it. Not that you didn't want to do it because you forgot to do it. Yeah. So reminders, reminders. I love reminders. Hey, that's um, th that's beautiful, Reza, and a great way to a great way to end. Uh, again, all of Reza's information is going to be below this video, get my finger right, below this video, and the book is called In Control: a, a Systematic Approach to Taking Complete Control of Your Life and Career. Uh, before we go, Reza, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh yeah, so I am uh, my my core. Um, effort, of course, like be, beside being an author, I'm also a leadership and sales consultant. So I do management consultancy. I make sure I work with a lot of multinational companies right now uh, across the world. So we, we travel a lot. Now we already have started to travel. And uh, so my, my main area is always around leadership and sales consultancy. So this is some of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Fantastic. Listen, Reza, thank you again. We could have gone on a lot longer. There's fa fascinating stuff. And I really, really encourage people go check out the book and check out Reza's work. Again, thanks, Reza. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you.